But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They are the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, and I have them, and you have them, and we all have them. And they want to see us do badly, but we don't let that happen. They predicted an overpopulation crisis in the 1960s, mass starvation in the 70s, and an end of oil in the 1990s. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country, or eradicate our liberty. America will always be the proud, strong, and unyielding bastion of freedom. In America, we understand what the pessimists refuse to see, that a growing and vibrant market economy focused on the future lifts the human spirit and excites creativity strong enough to overcome any challenge, any challenge by far. Have you ever heard a Republican president speak the way that Trump does about the left? I've been through a couple of Republican presidents in my lifetime. I don't remember anyone who would say things like, these are radical socialists who want to control every aspect of your life. That is what they want to do. Trump gets it. He's right. And he speaks about it the way that he should because it's reality. And on climate, I mean, this is the, this is the place now where I, I just cannot, uh, I cannot, See, I mean, I'm trying to think whether I have to take them seriously because they're crazy and they're dangerous. Their ideas are wrong and dangerous. But I, I think that they are worthy of ridicule. These people that believe the world's going to end in eight years unless we do this, that, and the other thing, they're worthy of ridicule. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Unless we do what? Oh, there's this great article by uh, Walter Russell Mead over at the Council on Foreign Relations, the Wall Street Journal, all aboard the crazy train. And it's about Davos. Just a quick step back for a second. You know, Davos is this gathering of the, the global elite. Queen of England, the Bilderberg, the Illuminati, Buck Sexton, come out of CFR and CIA. Google it. Um, but the Davos set is uh, this group that gets together. It's world leaders, celebrities, you know, social entrepreneurs, whatever the heck that means. Billionaires, fancy, fancy, fancy people. That's what Davos is. And it's a little little town nestled up in the mountains of Switzerland. Go lay hee hoo. That was for you, producer Mark. And this is where they get together to discuss a couple of things, global poverty and global climate change. But really global climate change has become the big thing. To give you an idea of the intellectual seriousness, this is what Walter Russell Mead points out, the intellectual seriousness of this Davos conference, where a renting a one-bedroom a uh, one-bedroom apartment in a certain part of town in Davos, a small town, can go for five thousand dollars a night. All right, it's a very, very expensive proposition to go to this this conference. Uh, and I think I forget what the fee. I think the fee is like fifteen or thirty thousand dollars a person or something. To go. I mean, it's very expensive. But uh, when you arrive this year, everyone is being told that at the conference they are not distributing paper maps of the town of Davos because of climate change. I'm not making this up. Wow. That's really going to show the climate change gods. 